Right. So we'll finish talking about anxiety and depression, but then also, we've talked about all these different things, right? Anger, criticism, or um, gossiping and complaining. Uh, I don't know why I said criticism. Um, anxiety and depression. So now we're going to talk about um, the uh, venting methods, you know, because uh, because we said what not to do. Now we're going to actually talk about, okay, so what do you do now? You know, so, uh, but uh, a few last ideas about these different things is that um, we have a lot of a lot of just wrong views when it comes to um, different things, not just depression and anxiety, but other things too. Uh, the first is medication is always the answer. Obviously, some people go to the other extreme and say medication is never the answer. Um, and I would say that you know neither of those things are really are really uh, that accurate of a thing. Not only that, but you really have to pay attention with medications because sometimes there'll be some that aren't really beneficial, and sometimes there'll be some that are beneficial. You know what I mean? Like some just screw with you and doesn't really compromise. Well, I mean, I'm I'm going through something personally right now that's kind of causing me to see this a little bit biased. You know what I mean? But still, there is that point that there are some medications that, you know, are, are actually beneficial to, to the body. Your, your body can process them better, can help you manage things better. But then there are some others that don't really do anything, and they actually kind of just have negative effect on your body. You know, and, and so there, there are things to watch out for there, but um, we shouldn't go on either side of this. Sometimes, you know, medication is a good thing, but sometimes it can be a bad thing. It really just depends on the, on the circumstance, on what the problem is. You know, um, by all means, we should never guilt trip ourselves or other people who, who, who are in need of medication. You know, there are some people who, like, for instance, we were talking about depression. There are some people who genuinely need, need medication uh, for different stuff, and, and that's not something we should look down on them for. Um, but then there's other times when um, maybe we need help getting, um, getting off some stuff, you know. Um, and, and obviously the Holy Spirit kind of just guides in, the, in those, kinds, those kinds of different things. But don't, moral of the story, don't try to guilt trip people on it, I guess. Um, another wrong idea, I'm the only person, I'm the only one who deals with this, be it anxiety, depression, or anything else. P people tend to get this this idea, you know, I, I, I'm the only one who goes with this, and I just can't talk to anybody about this, I have to be embarrassed about it, I have to be, you know, hide it from other people. Um... She's just embarrassed, guilty, shamed. Did, did you need something to write on? Yeah. Oh, okay, there's some DVD boxes right there. Oh, okay. Um, if you guys needed any stuff, there's games and DVD boxes down here to write on if you wanted to. Um, but uh, it's fine. Um, and there's also pens and pencils over there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, don't ever get the idea that you're the only person who, who's going through these different things. I mean... You know, like what I was telling you, with, with, I believe it was anxiety was the one I'm thinking of. One out of every five people deal with it. One, two, three, four, five. One of you deals with it. Is that what I mean? Depression uh, was, let, let me think, that was about 10%. I, I believe it was somewhere around 10. Seven. Yeah, but then remember I said later in the lesson that, that yeah. um, it could oh. more accurately be tossed up to 10 and it'd be right. okay. Yeah. Um, so let's just let's just say ten. Um, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. One of us potentially has it, if not more. So I mean, and then if we got got had our full number here, one to two probably had it, statistically speaking. See what I mean? So it's not something like um, that only you are dealing with. And then there's a, there's a thing that you know you shouldn't feel ashamed about it, anyways. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Um, another wrong idea is happiness is a choice. You know, you just have to pick yourself up by your bootstraps, two bootstraps, and power through. Some people who don't struggle with depression and just get discouraged, this is true for them. And the Bible oftentimes talks about that kind of thing. You know, um, for instance, um, Jesus says, "Don't be discouraged about. I mean, uh, don't be anxious about tomorrow." For you know, and he's talking about those different things. That's not really talking about anxiety disorders. He's more talking about that. You know, worrying about stuff. Don't worry about stuff. Um, but obviously, if you've ever had anxiety disorders, you know what it's like. Y you don't really necessarily have control over that. You know what I mean? You can choose what to do with that, but you don't necessarily, oh, I'm just going to feel at peace all the time. Well, that just doesn't happen. In fact, by nature, that's what a panic attack is. By nature, it's by its definition. It's something that comes unexpectedly, and you know, you, you just 
have a hard time catching your breath or whatever it is. Um, so obvious, obviously, happiness isn't really a choice. Um, also, another thing that goes hand in hand with this, a lack of faith. You just have to pray it through, you know. Um, everything can be resolved through prayer. It's like, no, no it can't. <coughs> you know, um, prayer is beneficial, and I've been talking a lot about how, how important prayer is. But just because you pray does not mean God's going to answer it. There will be some people who prayed for healing that will never see an answer here on earth. Can I tell that story? Is that okay? Well, you sure? Okay. So, um, Chuck, you know, in a wheelchair, and, and there are some people who, who would say, well, you know, maybe it's a lack of faith. Maybe, maybe if we just pray hard enough and believe hard enough, he'll walk. See what I mean? And so you pray and you pray and you pray and, and nothing happens. See what I mean? Well, why is that? Because God doesn't heal? No, God does heal. But not every single time that you ask for a pony is your father going to give you a pony. Right. See what I mean? <laughs> it's not like that. Um, and, and in fact, on the contrary, God told us that there would be problems in life. Yeah. You know, and so we shouldn't pretend to be all high and mighty about this thing. You know, almost like self-righteous, like if I just pray through and have enough faith, I can just conquer this mountain. But then on other things, be like, oh, no, that's just how it is. You know, like, oh, no, I, I have cancer. I have to go to chemo treatment. Um, weren't you just trying to pray this dude out of a wheelchair? You know what I mean? Yeah. There is such a thing as just stupidity in prayer. Um, once again, not saying we shouldn't pray. Not saying that at all. But not everything is going to be resolved in just, you just had a lack of faith. Um, another wrong idea, Christians don't deal with this and you are sinning by experiencing it. Christians don't deal with depression. You are sinning, sinner. Well, obviously, anybody who's been in, been in the church longer than, you know, a year knows that this is complete nonsense, you know, which is the one, the thing that surprises me, because I actually hear this more from people who have been saved 40 years than I do from people who have been saved for 10. I don't know why, but for some reason, as we grow in Christ, or I guess age in Christ, sometimes we don't really do much growing, I guess. Now that I, is so, um, in my country, they believe that. Yeah. I would say, like, very strong. You yeah. know. I don't want to say between Christians, but Orthodox, they're totally about it. Okay, no. you did something wrong, that's why you're... You know, it's like Job's friends all over again. Yeah. You know, um, and the Bible is so full of examples of this, you know. Oh, well, was it... Did, was it, did, did, did his parents have a lack of faith? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was him, and like... The pre-born him, God knew that he was going to have a lack of faith, so I gave him this, you know, he's like, well, no, it was so that I could be glorified, you know. And there's, I actually saw, again, this dude is freaking awesome. He doesn't have any arms or legs, and he gets around, like, perfectly fine. This dude is, have you, have you seen I've this? Seen he goes this. around on his board and stuff, he's awesome. He does, like, motivational speeches. Right, right, and he's actually a really good public speaker. He doesn't even twiddle his thumbs or anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, this guy is, is really legit. Um, I think and, his name's uh, like Torso Man or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, you know, and, and that's one of the things that he's real big on is, is don't don't sit there whining about what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. You know, one of the big things that he talks about. And, you know, it kind of is, it's really encouraging because it's like, well, if this dude doesn't even have any arms or legs can do this, I mean. Come on, you don't have it that bad, right? I mean, I woke up this morning, that's good, you know. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, Christians are going to deal with these different things. See what I mean? Um, no. But we kind of touched on that two weeks ago, so I really want to pound that in the ground. Um, it's always God's judgment. You're going through this because you either are sinning or were sinning. Well, I mean, or some will or will be sin. <laughs> sometimes that is a thing. Okay, sometimes. But let's throw this in perspective. Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities, were destroyed. How many weren't destroyed? All the other ones weren't destroyed. See what I mean? Yeah. Let's put this in perspective. See what I mean? It's not like every single time that some some bad thing happens, it's God's wrath. You know. Um, life is full of unexpected things. In fact, I think life is another word for unexpected. I think that's, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it's something in the Latin. Life means unexpected event. You know, mm -hmm. It's a joke. Um, <clears throat> a demon of blank needs to be cast out. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my so many times I've heard this. And uh, it's hard to, to 
rebut something, re rebuttal, to give a rebuttal on something that just is so unbelievably preposterous. But I'll try my best. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that um, things like this are a demon need to be, needing to be cast out, and nowhere in any of the examples of Scripture do we see somebody needing to cast out a demon of sickness or anything like that. Sometimes, the only exception, is we do see that some people who were demon-possessed had a sickness that followed, like, for instance, the guy that had his seizures. But that does not mean that every single person who... In fact, elsewhere in the Gospel, it says, this person had, you know, this or that, and Jesus healed them. It doesn't say, and Jesus cast out all the demons. Um, and then, it, um, also, when he's talking about prayer, he, isn't, he doesn't, you know, give an outline of that, uh, of casting out demons. But then also, in James, he says... Um, oh, well, I'll use that for another thing. But uh, in First Corinthians, he's talking about church order and about not suing each other and not all these different things. He doesn't say cast out the demon of jealousy. Yeah. He says stop suing people. Right. <laughs> you know, he doesn't say cast out the demon of lust. He says stop sleeping around. <laughs> See what I mean? Like the, the, there is a balance here. Um, and so yes, some things can be caused by demonic activity. However, you can usually tell when it's demonic, and furthermore, um, although a Christian can um, deal with struggles, they cannot be demon-possessed. So, there's something too. Um, Do you think sometimes it's easier for people to blame things like, it must be a demon, cast it out, instead of just coming to the terms with, okay, you're dealing with this yourself? You know, honestly, yes, and I also think it goes more than that, though. I think sometimes it offends people's theology. You know what I mean? I think sometimes they don't want to believe that God allows for some people to be sick. Right. And so, in their desire to have God um, fit their mold of what they think God should be, mm -hmm. they just kind of deny it. Yeah. It's not, no, it's not a thing. We just have to pray harder and longer. You know what I mean? It's like, well, Jesus didn't heal everyone in Israel. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but there's there's many different reasons, and I'm not trying to oversimplify it. I, I hope that I'm, you know. Um, and so this is a right idea. This is the true. I know it's under the headline of wrong ideas, but this is fact. Everyone struggles with anxiety and depression at different times. Everyone. Now, some people have, we talked about this two weeks ago, some people have like that recurring depression where that's going to be something they struggle with, but some people just experience it a moment in time. For instance, I had a friend uh, in a Royal Rangers that, um, oh, man, he was going going places. Like, he was a Christian example, you know what I mean? He was just a good guy. Um, one night he was driving home, he got hit by a drunk driver. The drunk driver lived and he died. And I went through massive depression for that. See what I mean? I just couldn't believe it. Another time I went through depression, uh, when I got out of the hospital, because I came out healthy when so many other people died. It's hard to deal with that. It's hard to live with that. See what I mean? So I went through depression. But those were events of depression. Right. You deal with it and you move on. But then there are other people who live their life in depression. See what I mean? And there is a difference between them. I'm not trying to oversimplify, oversimplify that. I'm just trying to say everyone goes through these things. Um, an example of anxiety, starting a new job. Um... First time you're you're about to have your first kid, there's that anxiety, you know, you know what will it be like, will they like me, will I do a good job, you know, all these different things. I, I mean, it's not everybody admits that they have these thoughts, but everybody has these thoughts. Um, you know, and you have that anxiety, see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, going to a new place you've never been before, you know, and you just feel kind of anxious about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody deals with these kinds of things, just to different extents, um, and whatnot. So... At the risk of going too long about these kinds of things, let's actually delve in there. What are some What are some steps to dealing with depression, anxiety? The first, seek professional help. I mean, for some reason, Christians have this idea that that's a bad thing, but God gave us doctors. The only place in Scripture where God did not approve of someone going to a doctor was because they only went to the doctors and they never once sought His will on it. Right. Never once prayed to Him. Never once asked, asked what he wanted them to do. See what I mean? When doctors become our go-to source, that's the problem. Because we're no longer fearing the Lord. See what I mean? The one who gave his life. We should always go to the Lord in prayer, but we should use doctors too. Yeah. See what I mean? Um, yeah. 
so uh, um, if you're going through depression, oftentimes they can find things like we already talked about this uh, stuff going on up here. Um, they call it chemical imbalances and whatnot. Um, or they can they can give you uh, special diets for anxiety um, that will lower your lower your uh, anxiety um, the, the, how much anxiety you feel um, different stuff like that they can give you uh, pointers on, on what you, what you are doing what you could be doing that kind of stuff um, yeah um, in fact with anxiety um, this is something that I personally dealt with um, a lot of times people who have anxiety attacks um, or anxiety disorders I guess you could say um, cut down the caffeine. That um, it helps tremendously. I can't believe how many people have panic attacks and are drinking, you know, energy drinks and coffee and all this stuff. And it's like, well, just stop drinking that. I mean, you're so tightly wound. Literally, if you swallowed some sand, there'd be a diamond, in, you know, in a few hours. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, it, or um, another big thing is gluten. Too many, too many gluten foods. Uh, not every bread has gluten, but um, you can find like gluten-free bread and whatnot. But gluten is another big, uh, big uh, uh, dietary food that can. Um, that's the wrong word, not dietary, but um, is a big food product that can can cause anxiety. Um, depression is for. Um, and we'll talk about this right here. Uh, with depression, um, comfort foods, for instance, can cause a circle of depression. Um, anything with too much grease or fat in it. Um, it gives you a, f a feeling of warmth and comfort and, and immediate process, but as your body burns it off, it gives you it kind of depraves you and gives you this feeling of just kind of an emptiness, which then causes you to need the food again. Which then, see what I mean? And it just kind of becomes a circle. And in fact, that can go along with many different things. Some people are overweight, get in a cycle, you know, I'm fat, so then they eat, and that comfort food makes them feel better. And once again, that that that, that grease or whatever, um, and it doesn't always have to be fatty foods. I'm just you know saying. Um, uh, mood changers. I already kind of talked about that with gluten. Gluten is a huge uh, mood changer, um, but also exercise. There, um, sometimes you know, just releasing that energy does something. You know, um, going for a walk, exercise, doing a daily exercise routine. It doesn't have to be anything like major. Just go out for a walk and look at the city. You know, get get kind of uh, a new a new perspective on stuff. Um, it helps. It does. Um, I mean, it might not alleviate the problem, but it can make it easier. Um, get out. Uh, when you're going through depression, one of the things you always are tempted to do is just kind of stay indoors, kind of camp out, uh, do, you know, your little thing inside. And, and as tempting as that is, you have to uh, find friends who are willing to go out with you. You know, uh, get out of the house yourself. Uh, anxiety, um, especially because anxiety usually, or not usually, but can sometimes lead to things like agoraphobia and that kind of stuff, you know, where you're kind of confined to your house. Um, one of the key things to doing that is getting out, you know, going shopping or something where you'll, you know, if you have a panic attack in, in public, being able to work through it in public. Obviously, you can't build up that, um, what is it called when you're building up your, uh, yeah. no, that's not the right word. No. Tolerance. No, like, like like a kid who who has poor self esteem and he wins a game confidence. and confidence, confidence. Um, it builds up your confidence when you get out there and you have a panic attack and you're able to deal with it. You know what I mean? If you just sit in your house, what's comfortable? Um, you'll just sit there thinking about what if, what if, what if, and you don't actually challenge that thought process, and so it just oh, it, get, it gets free reign in your mind. You know, uh, but depression is a lot different. Um, depression can happen whether you're inside or outside. But um, the thing with depression though is. Um, it can literally rob you of, of living a quality life. Um, and so for that reason, a lot of times you need somebody or, you know, something to be able to get you out a little bit, you know. Because um, you're not going to feel like it on either of those. Anxiety, you're going to feel like you can't. Depression, you just feel like, what's the point? You know what I mean? So um, getting out really does do help. Uh, it does help. Um, accountability partners, this goes with both of them. Um, people who will come alongside and say, okay, um, especially if they're going through the same thing that you are going through, uh, going through. For instance, a a, somebody struggling with depression really can help a person struggling with depression a lot more. Um, I have struggled with depression, but not, I mean not in a recurring sort of way, so I have a very limited knowledge of depression. Anxiety is a, is a recurring thing for me, so I'm able to help people with that, but depression not so much. Um, but uh, as far as anxiety, have people you know who will come along and say, Let, let's go, let's go to the store. You know what I mean? Let, let, let's go and get out. You know, somebody who will, who will challenge you on those things, ask how you're doing. You know, uh, just kind of be there for you. Now, I do. I want to say this because this is very important, but I want to make sure I clarify what's going on here. 
um, seek the Lord. And I know that some people kind of pass this off, like, you know, they either way super spiritualize it, you know, oh, you just need to seek the Lord, you know, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying trust in God as you go through the circumstance, okay? Not God takes everything in a pleasant way, that's not what I'm saying at all. But when you're going through these things, when you seek the Lord, you get to know Him in a new way. You know what I mean? And although the thing, it, it, the situation may stay the exact same, but there's just something that, that happens when you feel God's comfort in the situation. You know what I mean? Um, and, and you start feeling, realizing, you know, I can do this. But once again, that shouldn't be take, taken alone too. Get with friends. See what I mean? Sometimes we try to do either or. Either we only try to separate ourselves by friends or by doing all these things, and we don't seek after the Lord, or we only try to try to make it a thing of, of spiritual battle, warfare or whatever, and ignore the physical needs of our body. So, I mean, we shouldn't do either of those things. Um, resolve conflicts. Sometimes um, if you are in something, um, maybe um, bad attitude towards someone or, you know, whatever, I'm sure you've had conflicts before in your life. Just, you know, use one of the conflicts you've been in in your life. Um... But sometimes those can kind of build up in us and cause us to look on life a little bit differently, uh, which causes depression, anxiety, and that kind of stuff. Um, and even if it doesn't cause the anxiety or the depression or fear or whatever else comes along, um, it will still help you to manage your depression, anxiety, um, by resolving those conflicts. I'm kind of trying to book through these quickly so we can get to the venting methods. Any questions, though? I don't want to go too fast here. Um, actively fight wrong thinking. Um, a really big factor in depression. It is an anxiety too, but I... okay. Let me kind of clarify this. Anxiety. You have the wrong thinking really bad during the actual attack or episode itself. A lot of times with depression, you have it around the clock. See what I mean? Just a really low opinion of yourself. So, whereas with anxiety, you have a low opinion of yourself, too, or, you know, at times and whatnot, and if you start thinking about it, you really overly think about it when you're actually in the heat of the of the attack or the episode or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, it's something that you have to actually choose in the here and now present to, to, to combat, you know. Um, it, one of the key ways to doing this is, well, I already said, you know, professional help can help you do this, counselors. They can really help you uh, to manage your thoughts. Um, exercise can help with this um, because as you start exercising, you, you start just feeling better. It, it's, supposedly, it releases something into your bloodstream that makes you feel better. But um, regard, regardless of that, when you start looking at yourself and you start realizing, you know, I, I feel better, I look better, you know, you just start kind of, you know what I mean? You, you just, your thinking automatically kind of changes. Um, friends are, are a good way to do that. Um, seeking the Lord, obviously, but the thing about seeking the Lord is don't seek the Lord with the mentality of an immediate answer. You know what I mean? God changes our thoughts and, 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 and lifestyles over periods of time. Very rarely does he just... You know what I mean? Very rarely. So don't feel like, oh, God didn't answer. You know what I mean? Go to it with this mentality instead. I just have to keep seeking. You know what I mean? Um... Yeah. So don't start getting those ideas. I'm worthless. I I, I feel so ashamed. You know, with those destructive ideas. You know, like self harm or whatnot. Um, especially if any of you ever go through anxiety attacks uh, or panic attacks of any kind, really. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna start thinking things that, that aren't even rational thoughts, but you're gonna believe them. Like with your whole heart, you're gonna believe them. Um, you're gonna die, or you know, you're having a heart attack, or you know, whatever. I, I talked about this before, but usually people with anxiety disorders just start making if they struggle with it for long enough start making stuff up, and they actually believe them, you know what I mean, I, I genuinely have this, and it's not so much hypochondria, although that is a, that we were taught, you were talking about that, remember that, um, hypochondria is a thing, and it does make anxiety worse, but anxiety is something like, you'll be like, okay, I feel this, and you'll start looking stuff up online, and you'll stumble across WebMD, <laughs> I have cancer, or I have this, or I have this, you know, whatever. And and you'll start diagnosing yourself, and before you know it, you have five different things that's wrong with you. You need this and this and this, and you're just, ah, there's nothing I can do, I'm, ah. You know, and it's just like, well, okay, hold on, calm down. You know, um, 
that's just anxiety talking. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing about anxiety that's really troubling is it'll actually mimic the thing that you think you have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it becomes self-defeating. At first, it's just you know crippling fear or whatever, but then it starts manifesting in different areas that you're afraid of. Let's say you're afraid of um, having a heart attack. All of a sudden, you start getting all the all the symptoms of, of a heart attack. You one of your one, one side of your face goes paralyzed. You, you you can't think very clearly. You're like oh my gosh. Then you start having the thumping in your heart, and your chest starts cramping up. And it's like oh my gosh, I'm I'm really having a heart attack. Did you know that the not the, I shouldn't say it like this, but a large majority of um, ER visits are from people with anxiety disorders. It's co it costs insurance companies so much money that they try to diagnose you early on so that way you don't waste their money in the ER. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not joking. That, that's why insurance companies will very frequently call for regular checkups and be like, do you have any uh, have any dark thoughts? Do you have any, you know, and, they'll just, and you're like, what is this all about? Right. Well, if you've ever been gone through anxiety disorders, you know what they're talking about, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and they're just kind of trying to get you get you some help before you go into the ER a thousand times, you know. Cause <coughs> and then there's other people who go into the ER who, like, waited until the day after the holiday, and they have, like, an arrow sticking out of their arm or something. They're like, I wanted to wait until after Christmas. It's like, well, you probably should have came in before, but whatever. <laughs> uh, anyways, um... And so with those anxiety attacks, you're going to start having thoughts, you know, going through. And you have to actively and consciously stop those thoughts while they're still happening, which is very hard to do when the thoughts, you believe them. And you have to tell yourself that they're not true, even though you believe them with all your heart. So, I mean, that's very difficult. So that takes us to this slide for anxiety tips. Challenge yourself, but realistically. When I first started challenging myself, I just went around, I drove around the block. See what I mean? I challenged myself, but realistically. Then I started coming to, driving to Tularosa. Well, okay, that's like a 13-mile drive. Whoa. Whoa. But then I, I, I asked, and I, and I spent, and I started spending the night at my dad's house. So I, that was my little reward. I could drive 13 miles, and you have a safe place. See what I mean? And so I started setting up safe places where I could ch keep challenging myself. Then I started going for walks um, uh, during certain times of year when it was easier for me. See what I mean? And then until eventually I started realizing... That I didn't need safe places because no matter where I was, I could still handle it when I'm there. You see what I mean? It's not about where you are at when you start having the anxiety attacks. It matters um, about just stopping and taking back control of the situation when you're having it. Um, but anyway, so keep challenging yourself, but realistically, don't allow yourself to just sink into a, into a, a room or something like that. Um, breathing exercises. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you show you guys these in case any of you ever end up um, going through anxiety. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to not breathe out of your chest. Okay, breathing out of your chest, that's where emotion comes from. Okay? You want to breathe out of your stomach. Okay, and this will be very easy, easy to tell. Wrap your shirt around your stomach. Where's the air going? Look. See? When you breathe out here... It builds up anxiety. First off, a lot of times when you're feeling... Ch pains in your chest is because you're breathing through your chest and so your chest will tighten as you're breathing because it wasn't meant to be breathed there see what I mean mm -hmm. so as you transfer your breathing back down to your stomach and then you're able to breathe deeper which causes you to take back control of your breathing because when you're going through stuff like anxiety you're gonna lose your breathing see what I mean that's just something that's gonna happen um, so you focus on that and then you you focus on slow and deliberate breaths Start focusing on your heartbeat, and start focus, focusing on slowing it down, and then eventually you, you come back to a calm place. See what I mean? Um, you just have to take back take back that uh, that um, the control of your breathing. Take it back. Um, stay hydrated. Uh, dehydration is a big factor to anxiety, um, and it can help immensely during during uh, panic attacks, especially because when you're going through panic attacks, you'll you'll get really hot, and if it's already like summertime or whatever, you could potentially suffer heat stroke or stuff like that. So you're gonna want to stay hydrated. It'll really help in in, in different things. Um, keep a journal. Find out if there's different things that that um, that set you off. You know, and you'll you'll notice patterns. You know. Um, I don't know, maybe you were thinking about something, maybe you were reading something or doing something, whatever it is, and this goes with depression too, you can find ways to kind of um, have fewer episodes and whatnot, you know what I mean? 
Um, like, for instance, um, to use an example that was given to us two weeks ago, Nicole said about how sometimes watching the news will ca make it a lot worse. So now she has, she knows something that sets her off. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she's able to circumnavigate that problem. See what I mean? And it's the same thing with, with anxiety, too. You just start, kind of start to take notes, realize what's going on. Um, um, you also have to consciously tell yourself this. The feelings will pass. These are only temporary. That's very hard when you think you're dying, um, but it's it's true nevertheless. You know it, the feelings will pass. They are only temporary. And you just keep telling yourself that this isn't going to be forever. Just focus on your breathing. It's okay. See what I mean? And I was lucky because I was married at the time, so I had someone to to be able to help me through it. But when I first started having them, I was uh, 17 in Albuquerque. You know there was no one there with me. I was driving around Albuquerque by myself, so it just got very difficult. Um, you know, and, and, and this was daunting when I first started thinking this, when I was anxiety attacks, they can happen anywhere. Nowhere is safe. But then eventually you start thinking a little bit differently. They can happen anywhere. Am I going to spend my whole life fearing what may or may not happen? Yeah. Or am I going to go out and enjoy my life and realize if it happens, I'll deal with it when it happens. Yeah. See, I mean, they can happen anywhere. Your house isn't any safer than outside. Yeah. Uh, pull yourself back to reality. Um, there are a lot of different different tactics for this one. Some people use ice cubes. Um, they, they cause you to be able to feel something that's cold and brings you back down. Um, try to feel on something. If you're driving, try to feel maybe the car seat or the window or something. Just something where you can feel or turn on the AC or the heater and stick your hand by it where you can feel it on your fingers. Uh, just something that kind of gives you back on your senses. Because anxiety attacks will kind of mute you and deafen you to the world. Um, sometimes you have a lot of problems with your sensors, your sensory, you know, you can't really hear maybe too well, or maybe you can't feel too well, uh, maybe you can't see too well, um, a lot of times migraines will, 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 will happen, they'll lead to other things, whatnot, um, and so if you, if you have something to pull you back down to reality, it, it usually helps you to regain, you know, I don't want to say consciousness, because you don't, well, some people do lose consciousness, consciousness, but, um, you kind of lose that, um, um, you're in La La Land. I don't know how, what else to say, but it kind of pulls you back down from that, you know, just kind of feeling something. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, let me let me go back for a second. Um, you may want to explain to your close relatives or, or, you know, your close friends what you're going through so they don't get offended because you'll probably end up hurting their feelings throughout the course of panic attacks or any anxiety disorders, really. You know, oh, well, you've been ignoring me. It's like, well... See what I mean? It, it's not really something I wanted to do. You just see what I mean? Or, um, oh, what was another thing that, that I did? Um, oh, you never want to go do anything. Now I, now I can't ever go do anything, so it's, I don't, I, I still don't get, get out much, but it's for a completely different reason now. Um, you know, but explain to them, well, I, I can't get out much, or, you know, whatever. Um, so, anyways, does that kind of make sense? Because sometimes you can inadvertently hurt people's feelings because they don't know that you're struggling with something. You know, and hopefully they'll be able to actually, you know, not judge you for what you're going through. Hopefully, but you know, sometimes that happens, and it just takes time for pe some people to deal with stuff. Don't get sucked into self -crit criticism. Anxiety is a large part of why anxiety or disorders are caused. Not the only reason, but a large part is having an inner conflict with yourself. Do you know what I mean? Not everyone, I cannot say this enough times, not everyone that I've talked to who ha goes to anxiety disorders has a problem with themselves, okay? But I and some other people who I've dealt with with anxiety were having inner conflicts. And if there's no if there's no peace in here, there won't be any peace in here. Same as it's not going to happen. Um, a lot of people that I, I know who are dealing with anxiety um, are not Christians. They're not um, spiritually where they're at. They're not happy spiritually. Um, that's why um, sometimes people in Hinduism and, and Buddhism and that kind of stuff get peace, is because they're just able to to focus on something that's not them. That you know, see what I mean? Um, so, anyways, um, so don't get sucked into self criticism though. Um, you're gonna have just dark thoughts that go through your mind with depression, anxiety, all, all really any kind of stuff like that. And you just have to kind of just. Put a stop to it. Choose not to think about it. Think of something else. Think about something else. Um, 
and we talked about a lot of that a couple weeks ago, so I don't really see the need of, of pounding that back in. But, you know, just basically, long story short, don't allow self-criticism to jump in. And that doesn't even matter if you're struggling with anxiety or depression. That's just a good life principle. Don't allow that to settle, settle in. Um, facing your fears really does help, you know, um, especially with things like panic attacks or whatever. Sometimes it, it, it surfaces a problem that you had that you didn't realize that you had. Like maybe you had a lot of fears that you just didn't even realize were there. And so it causes those fears to surface. Well, now there's a good time to face those fears. You know what I mean? Uh, work through it. Because it's not going to go away anytime soon if you have anxiety disorders. You might as well make the best of it and plow through it. You know what I mean? Um, in ways, anxiety is a lot easier than depression. I will say that. Because depression is like a veil put over you. You know what I mean? It's just everything's dark. But anxiety... Everything's kind of scary, but you do have moments of, 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 of it being okay, and the more you deal with it, the more you can deal with it. With depression, sometimes you deal with it, and you keep dealing with it, and it never gets any better. So, I mean, that that's very hard to keep doing. So, um, that takes us to the question of how should you vent or decompress without being angry, complaining, gossiping, etc.? This is a question. question. Um. How should you vent or decompress <clears throat> without being angry, complaining, <clears throat> gossiping, whatever? I don't want to sound cliche, but like praying and worship. Like, okay. There's no cliche answers. You're a good answer. Um, the, uh, the other day... I was getting frustrated with something, and I was like, wait, I shouldn't be complaining about this. I should be happy about this because I could be somewhere else. Mm. Good answer. Anybody else? Or anything else? Even just stopping to think about the situation. Mm -hmm. And just really, really think about, you know, should I be upset about this? Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. Sometimes we get so caught up in the heat of the moment, we just kind of lose sight of the actual reality of what's going on around us. That's a very good point. I like what happened with me today. I lost sight of it. Yeah? Freaked out. Hell. Yeah, I had that quite a few times with anxiety. You know, I'd be all in my bedroom all alone. I'd be thinking, wait. Wait, what? <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Maybe not so much with anxiety, because you don't want to look to things that are going to cause you more fear, you know, but definitely with, with depression, um, I think um, looking at other situations and what other people are dealing with, realizing okay. that you're not the only one, okay. that there are worse situations, and I know because I've had to deal with that with myself, looking at, okay, this situation is not the worst, like, there's been more situation. There's people are going through way more than what I'm going through, and just kind of not being so yeah. Small. And realizing life is hard for yeah. everybody sometimes. Yeah. Getting getting off the me focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to downplay what you said, but it just made me think of that. Um, um, thank you, God, that I'm not like this lowly sinner. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I know you didn't mean it like that, but it just, no. it made me think of that. <laughs> no, I, I look at situations like, say, and I'm just going to use an example. Okay, say I'm like, say I'm, I'm poor or whatever. And I'm like, I don't have this and I yeah. don't have that. Okay, well, let's look at the kids in third world country. Right? Have no food and, you know, there's always no. a worse situation or we're so upset that we're persecuted. Yeah. We're being persecuted, but there's, you know... Christians in China that are being beheaded. Yeah. You know, like, there's, and you're sitting here upset that somebody, yeah. you know, said something about your faith, you know. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm just saying that there's but seriously. people that are going through things, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of a recurring thing for a lot, uh, um, for a lot of different things. Just kind of getting the eyes off of, off of, um what's actually going on in the world and just getting it so focused on the situation, you just kind of lose sight of stuff. Um, one thing that me and Ben used to do concerning the youth group down in Alamo was if uh, they would do something stupid, 
we would wait until the next time that we saw them to talk to them. Mm. Because it gave us a chance to cool down. And, no. Yeah, that's a Yeah, you don't want to do it in the heat of the moment. <laughs> mm. Yeah, buddy. Well, it's the same with your kids sometimes. <laughs> Go to your room before I kill you. Oh, you don't know how many times I send Kyle <laughs> to his room because if I didn't, I'm going to you. Go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you're not my kid. <laughs> Very good answers, though. And were there any other answers? I was just going to say, sometimes going for a walk really clears your mind, clears your head, gives you a chance to, you know... Very true. That's a good point because it kind of goes back to what you said about exercise. Yeah. Getting out, you know, yeah. getting fresh air, getting the blood flowing through your body, kind of, you know. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah. Were you guys going to say anything else? Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'm not trying to rush you. So, let's go through some venting methods. The first one is prayer. Crazy. James, chapter 5, verse 13. This prayer, th this verse last year really started to mean something to me. Actually, it was the beginning, end of last year, the beginning of this year. This verse means so much to me right now in my life. James 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? The word literally means going through a, 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 a strong struggle. Or is bad crap happening? Yeah. Then he must pray. Do you know how I like what I like to do when I'm struggling? Everybody else needs to know how much I'm struggling. <laughs> they need to pray for you. What? And they need to pray for you. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I don't care what's going on in your life. This is way more important than what's going on in your life. Seriously though. You see what I mean? Or or we sit there and we just complain to ourselves. Um. You know, and I don't know how many times I've done this, and I'm ashamed to even admit that I do this, but yeah. You probably all do it anyway, so it's okay. Uh, where you start nitpicking to God. You guys do it too. Back off. What's that? Where you start listing everything that's wrong and, and how he isn't doing anything about it. And, you know, oh. well, God, you're allowing this to happen and this. You know, you know, you know, you do it too. Don't be all. You, one of you guys does it, I know. know. I did it today. Uh, on a way to, ah, on a way she admitted. <laughs> on recording, she admitted it. You know, there so many things happened today. And I'm walking, uh, I'm driving home, I'm like, I wonder if she's doing it on purpose. <laughs> you know? And then, and then I'm like saying to myself, it doesn't matter. I said that to myself, it doesn't matter who is doing what, it's how you respond to it. Oh. <laughs> you know, this is not an excuse for you to respond. I, I said that to myself, and I'm like, and I said, I said, God, I wonder if she's doing that to me on purpose, just, you know, to like drive me crazy or whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I need an answer. I'm like, it doesn't matter how it how it it goes. It's how you react to it. I'm like, oh. I'm a, I'm totally imagining you imagining you being on that uh, uh, heavyweights. How you doing, little Diana? <laughs> Not <Yeah>. good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you doing that? Speaking on me. I like that. I like that very much. So the first venting method, pray, yeah. pray, pray, pray. And then pray. Uh, number two, worship. Oh, yeah, Gracie got the first and the second answer. You know, a lot of people have a hard time understanding the Psalms. Let me kind of break it down for you. Real people struggled with real things, just like you do, and then they wrote a song about it. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. See what I mean? Are you going through depression? Well, they were too. Are you angry at something? They were too. Do you hate this person? They did too. In fact, one of the psalms says, How I wish somebody would take their babies and throw them against the, against the rocks. Don't you think they were a little mad at the person? Right. Now, granted, these were people who did, you know, kick them out of their city and, and did the same thing to their babies. So, you know, but still, but still. Uh, psalm 95, 6-7. <clears throat> Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us know before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. And the sheep of His hand. Sorry. I knew I was missing a line there. 
but you know this is this is definitely something that um, and I, I mean you could really go through a lot of different psalms. There, there's one psalm where David has sex with this woman, right, and then kills her husband, and then a prophet comes by and tells him a little story, and he gets all kinds of upset, and he's like, "You are the person who did this bad this bad thing from the story that I just told you." And he's like, "Oh yeah yeah I am," you know, and so he writes a song about it. You know, alone in my princess. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, seriously though, he does he does write this song about it, um, and it's and it's actually in the Psalms. Read through the Psalms and, and you'll find it. And it'll say you know um, a, a Psalm of David when he sinned with Bathsheba, mm -hmm. you know, or like think about uh, Psalm twenty three, which everybody knows. You know, guiding me by those still waters. Don't you think that? Why do you think he wrote that? So I mean, maybe he was going through a hard time. So I mean, you can tell what, what was going on in the writer's song by what they emphasized in the song. What was important to them? See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think Psalms is just a good place to go for that. Um, make friends. Um, sometimes it's hard to do this, but go out and make new friends or something. Or, or find a good friend, or, or maybe you already have friends. Just make them closer friends. I mean, do something. Don't just sit there and rot away. Um, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, excuse me, um, says, Two are better than one, because why? They have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up, lift, <clears throat> lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. See what he's saying here? That principle. So, anyways, um, friends can really be a great way to uh, to vent. And you ask how? Because you guys can go out and, and do stuff to get your mind off of it. Haven't you ever had a bowling a friend that you just went bowling with? You don't actually talk about the problem half the time. You go out and you have all kinds of fun. See what I mean? You, you make friends and you get your mind off that kind of nonsense. Because the one thing you don't need, if, especially if you're going through an irritating circumstance, is to just sit there thinking about it and talking about it. Because that's what you're doing without your friend. You don't need your friend's help to do that. See what I mean? <laughs> but when you go out there and you, and you, and you, and you do something, you relieve that, that, that steam, it, it really does help. Um, prayer, you know, you know, God already knows what we're thinking. And we can just come to God and, and be real with him. Did you know that? Yeah. So we're, we're going to come to the Lord in prayer. We're able to actually talk to him about what our, what the problem is. I mean, that, that's okay. In worship, we're able to just clear our mind of all the stupid things that's irritating us. And I don't mean stupid things as though they're not important. Oftentimes they are important. But I mean stupid things as in um, all the things that is just stupid situations. Just irritating. You know what I mean? Um, but worship clears that. Uh, and then friends help us to get our minds off. These are all things that help us to vent in a healthy way. Exercise. Um, you said this? or Tracy. You, you said this. Um, go, actually, I have right there under exercise. Go for a walk. Um, this was actually one of the stress management techniques they taught us in college. When you're really, you know, you got a lot of stuff going, going on, just kind of step back for five seconds and just go for a walk. Just relieve that for a little bit. See what I mean? Um, um, but yeah. Now I knew I knew one guy who'd get all kinds of upset because um, he'd sit there holding his holding his you know pee. And so I said, well, why don't you just have more bathroom breaks? And he was able to calm down then. So I mean, some things we just don't even realize are irritating us are irritating us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that sounds stupid to you guys because you probably have bathroom breaks, <laughs> but this guy would not hold it until he got upset. So anyways, um, but exercising uh, is a good way to vent that to vent that energy. Um, there's something else I was going to say about this going for a walk thing. Um, uh, I wish I could remember it. Uh, relieve the stresses that you can. If there is anything that you can relieve from your from that's building up the stress, then by all means do it. See what I mean? Oh, I, I can't afford, you know, doing this and this and this, so, so don't. If something's got to give, drop it. You know, I couldn't afford having a smartphone. Well, two smartphones. So... I dropped to a to a simple plan, and now I don't have that stressor anymore. See, what I mean, I got rid of a stressor that was ir that was making me stressed out, and now it's not bothering me anymore. Because whereas I was paying over a hundred and I was paying a hundred and twenty dollars per month for two phones, now I'm paying sixty five bucks a month for two phones. Cut the bill in half. 
See what I mean? I, stress are gone. Um, time management. Some people just stress themselves out because they have too much to do. And so they try to do 100 different things, and they don't finish on anything because they, they try to multitask. Write this down on your forehead. Don't multitask. Hmm. Multitasking is the quick, quickest way to irritate yourself. People multitask think they're getting more done, but they actually get less done. If you just do this, assign special time to work on a project. Mm -hmm. Then when that time's over, go work on something else. I tried out yesterday. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did it work better? Oh, yeah. Since I stopped multitasking, I finished a class, one of my grad school classes. I finished up some different projects at the church. I, I, I was able to get two months ahead in my stuff in, in, in church when I was barely making it the day before. Multitasking is not beneficial to anyone. And then you're going to be in a crappy mood the whole time that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Reallocate your time. Manage that. Try, kind of try to figure it. And always put in time, dead space. Always put in time for you to just relax. There's nobody, nobody in the world can get off of work Go straight to doing something else. Go straight to doing something else. Go to bed and get up and do the exact same thing. Nobody can do that. Maybe for like a couple of years, but eventually you're just going to get so burnt out, you're just not going to care anymore. <clears throat> so find out what's important to you and what you, what you, can, what you can drop and what you can't, and then do that. Um, and here, here's another, another example. Um, using credit cards. That can be a huge stressor for some people. So don't get a credit card, and then you don't have to worry about it. Some people get really stressed out about knowing that there's a payment coming up and you know trying to, trying to figure out... So don't. Checks were ca checks were very stressful for me. I don't use checks because they were too stressful. It was hard for me to remember, okay, I wrote this money out, but they haven't deposited it yet, so even though my account shows it's there, it's actually not. I can't do that kind of crap. I don't have time for that kind of nonsense. So instead, I just don't write checks. A stressor that I removed. Remove the stressors that you can. Um, except those that you can't. Um, for instance, some people have very stressful jobs. Well, there's not much you can do about that. Maybe you can find another job, but usually you can't. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if you can't, well, I mean, just find some way to find... A lot of people like going to the gym. That, usually, some, for some people, really helps decompress after an irritating job. Uh, irritating people. Have, do you guys have any irritating family members? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah? You can't really do anything about that, can you? You can divorce your spouse. You can't divorce irritating family members. <laughs> You see what I mean? You're screwed. Um, my thing's dying here. I'll plug this in. Um, take up a hobby. Is there anything in your life that you do for fun? Well, maybe there should be. So, I mean, it's okay to have a little bit of fun. I'm not saying you have to go buy the new PS4 and buy 15 different games on it. I mean, if that's what you wanted to have as a hobby, whatever. But what I'm saying is... Um, find something to do that's fun. You know what I mean? I play guitar, and I think that's fun. I, I learned, I, 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 uh, worked, uh, excuse me, I worked on Greek, and I really thought that that was fun. I did that for me, not for everybody else. Other people I talked to about Greek, they're like, that sounds boring. Why well, am I doing it for them? I'm doing it for me. Um, but, you know, find some, maybe there's something you've always wanted to do. Well, make some time and, and, and work on it, you know what I mean? Um. But just something that's fun, it really helps helps vent, you know, it helps you to, to just clear out your mind. Um, fast. Fasting can be a great, great, great way um, to to really um, help you focus on spiritual matters and, and get your head back on with God. Um, in Judges, chapter 20, verse 26 says this. Then all the sons of Israel and all the people went up and came to Bethel and wept. Thus they remained there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. They were, fast with the, they were faced with the problem, so they fasted. Yeah. See what I mean? If some people think that it's the world's worst thing to, if, if somebody's not eating. That's not the world's worst thing. Sometimes we go through grievances in our life, and how do we deal with it? We cry. We we lose our appetite. These are different. Even animals do this. Have you ever seen an animal that was very close with its master and the master dies? Have you seen? Watch what they do. They pace back and forth. They won't eat. They just sit there staring at the door, waiting for them to come, and they never do. If even animals do, don't you think people will too? See, so, I mean, it, 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 things like that. They're natural processes. We we don't need to feel you know stupid about these kinds of things, but realize. Let, let the season pass. You know what I mean? Let the season pass. Um, ask for help. 
counselors, pastors, godly people. But let me just kind of clarify on this, because this is something that kind of irritating for me. There was someone who was causing uh, a problems um, in, in the church, um, not here. Okay? So don't try and start guessing who it was. Um, and this other person tried to, uh, you know, be be the shoulder to cry on, I guess. And they got sucked into it, too. And they both ended up leaving. And you know what the thing is? Every time you talk to them, they always had the world's best reason for why they left the church. Oh, I left because this person did this. It was it, They never took ownership for it. Never once did they take ownership. It was never I did. It was no. It was always someone else did something. You know what I mean? And they had this long list of, as to how everybody else in the world had wronged them. And they were the ones who were wronged. Never in any situation is one person completely 100% wrong, wronged. Victim. Is never, never ever is one is one person the complete victim. Yeah. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Okay, so there. Um, but ask for help from godly people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For instance, if I need help, I'm not going to go to Chuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just kidding, Chuck. <laughs> but seriously, though, go to people who you know are entrenched in the church, who know the Bible. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go ask a Jehovah's Witness for help. Right. They don't have any spiritual basis to... See what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to go ask someone like Pastor, someone like Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, just kidding. <laughs> uh, but anyways, though, um, ask for help. Sometimes it'll be difficult to work through something. Um, train yourself to focus on the good. Um, Philippians 4, 4 through 8 talks about that. He says, you know, rejoice. Then he says... Uh, for, uh, instead of being anxious about stuff, pray about it. And then he says, control the things you're thinking about and think about good things. Well, that there's your three-step process there. You know, worship God, and then once you once you finish worshiping him, pray. And once you finish praying, then take control of your thoughts. Because you're not going to be able to take control of your thoughts if you try to just, I'm going to stop thinking about this bad thing. So, anyways, but that's in Philippians 4, 4 through 8. He just kind of walks through the process there. Um, realize it's not the end of the world. And Nicole said this, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the different things that we get so, ah, well, it's okay. Just stop and realize, you know, eh, it's okay. Some of this I'm blowing out of proportion. You know, like we hear something, what do we think? Oh, this is, this is just, this is it. You know, this is the end of the world. This is just, you know, we just start really worrying about it. And it's like, well, half the time it doesn't even end up like that anyway. Well, more than half the time. Uh, Philippians 4, um, 11 through 13. Not that I speak from one, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. And any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled of, and being hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. So I already admitted that you, sometimes you're going to be in need, right? Didn't he just admit that? I can do all things to him who strengthens me. God, God is able to lead you through these things. Um... I'll go ahead and read 4, 4 through 8, too. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Basically, what he just told us is worship God, pray instead of worrying about it, pray, and then stop and then stop thinking about nonsense. But he basically gave us three steps to over, to overcoming our minds. Anticipate troubling times. Diana and Serena uh, already know a lot a lot about this because we talked about this in, in the in the worship um, we had devotions with the worship team. Um, but it foresee when you're going to be going through difficult times. Like a lot, for a lot of people, being around a lot of family is terrible. So when Christmas comes around, you, you anticipate, okay, this is going to be a terrible time. And you are you're able to build yourself up for it instead. Not build yourself up like, um, okay, it's going to be bad. Prepare for battle. Yeah, no, not that kind of. I, I mean I mean more of like spend more time in, the, in prayer, spend more time in the Word than you would have. See what I mean? That kind of preparing for it. Not psyching yourself into a terrible situation. Where's grandma? <laughs> Is she going to say something about my new tattoo? Um, do something nice for someone else. 
Sometimes when really upset, one of the best cures is what Serena was talking about, getting past us. Do something for someone else. See what I mean? When, 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 man, I was in, I was in a struggle for three years. I talked about this on a Wednesday night. I just wanted to leave. I wanted to quit. I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I'm, I'm done with this whole, you know, being associate pastor here. I'll just go somewhere else and do something else somewhere else. You know, anything. Um, and how I got out of it, you're never gonna believe it. I stayed in prayer. I know, right? And then, I did something for someone who I was extremely angry with, and the problem just went away. Three years in this nonsense, and it just went away. See what I mean? There's something to be said about getting your eyes off of you. Do something nice for someone else. Have safe places. We talked about this in the worship team. Have safe places. Places where you know you can go and be alone with the Lord. Have safe times. Times of the day or of the week or whatever, when you know this is, a, this is my time to be with God. Nothing gets in the way of this. And Pastor, Pat, remember last Sunday? Was it last well, you weren't there. No, yeah, it was Sunday morning, so you weren't there. Was it Sunday morning? Who was there Sunday morning? I think so. When Pastor said about the, the guy with... No, that was two weeks ago. Let me just say it. Um, the guy who said, okay, at 7 o'clock, that's my time with the two Lord. Two weeks ago. It was two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, 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 the guy, and he said, this is my time with the Lord. And the guy said, I can meet you at this time. Yeah. And so I had to tell the guy, well, I already have an appointment with Jesus. <laughs> See what I mean? It was awkward for him, but he, you know... A safe time when you know this is my time to be with the Lord. And then, of course, safe people where, you know, I can tell them my struggles and they're going to be there to build me up. Not to, not to, not that nonsense that a lot of times we do where, oh, honey, I know he's just a bad guy. You know, not that kind of Dr. Phil crap. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying the friend who's actually there for you and will listen to you and then help you to go do something about it to fix your heart. See, I mean, someone who doesn't tell you what you want to hear, but tells you what the difficult thing is to hear. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. But he wronged me. No, I'm not saying that, but, I mean, that doesn't justify you doing that. See what I mean? Oh, don't get quiet on me now. Am I saying something difficult? Did I talk too fast? I can talk slower. <laughs> um, but have those safe people. People who you know will, will, will tell you the way, the way that it actually is the truth, but they'll always be there for you. See what I mean? Those people that you may they may irritate you sometimes, but you know they're not gonna go anywhere. See what I mean? And those are the kinds of people that we need in our life. So, um, not that you you can always surround yourself with just likable people, but I mean our close friends do need to be someone who we can actually at least trust. <laughs> so, anyways, reconcile with those you can. Sometimes we are very easily touchy, very moody because we've got our feathers all ruffled about something. You know what I'm talking about. Where there's somebody with a bad attitude towards somebody, and so then they start taking it on you. Like you say, oh, where'd you get that tattoo? You don't like it either? I, whoa, pull back the blades. I didn't say anything. So, anyways. Uh, control your thinking. We already talked about that in the Philippians passage. Because um, sometimes when we, when we get in that kind of mindset, we just start nitpicking about, nitpicking about nonsense. Um, so don't let yourself think about stupid things. Don't see failure as the end. This one you need to write down for sure. I don't know if you're writing, trying to write everything down or not, but write this one down and circle it. Don't see failure as the end. Keep trying. Bad things are going to happen. You're going to mess up. You know, spoiler alert, you're going to mess up. But the, uh, the difference between... Do you know what the, fel the difference between failure and success is? The person who is successful is the person who keeps getting back up. And the person who is a failure is the person who doesn't. That's the only thing that separates the two. See what I mean? Is it, did you guys hear what I said? The, the person who is a success is the person who fell and got back up. The person who is a failure is the person who fell and stayed down. Right. That, that's what makes you a failure, by stop trying. See what I mean? The only one who can make you a failure is, is when you give up on yourself. See what I mean? Don't give up on yourself. Keep going. Um, the failure is not the end. Oh my goodness, I cannot say this enough times. Failure is not the end. This week, when you mess up and you do something really stupid and you're guilt-tripping yourself, can you go back and tell yourself this? Failure is not the end. It's okay. You know, climb back up on the horse. It's okay. Because it's going to happen this week. I Probably tomorrow, because I'm, I'm mentioning it tonight, which means it'll probably happen um, happen tomorrow. That's just the way it happens. You, you know, you, you, you preach something on Sunday and you're all... I think I really got this one. Then Monday morning, you deal with exactly what you just preached about. And it's like, oh, thanks, God. Thanks for ruining my pride. 
Thank you. I was actually kind of happy where I was. Um, but anyways. Sometimes we fail, and it's really not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you have to look at what your failure is. You know? That actually is a good point. This is actually is not a failure. This is a stepping stone. I can use this. Right. Know? Especially because we tend to be huge critics of ourselves. Right. See what I mean? And oftentimes, like Serena, wow, I'm glad you said that. Sometimes there'll be something that wasn't really, but you're sitting there beating yourself up. It's like, it's it's okay. It's not that big. Of, see what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. Um, beware of transference, though. This is just a, a little note for you to stick on there for yourself. This is the last the last note. Um, uh, beware of transference. Transference is where you're talking with someone who's dealing with something, and it kind of just gets on you. Like you're dealing with someone who's depressed, and you just start start feeling depressed. You start dealing with someone who has anxiety attacks, and, and you feel very anxious all of a sudden. See what I mean? That's called transference. Um, be aware of transference. It will always happen. If you're going to be around high-maintenance people, and you know what I'm talking about, those high-maintenance people, you know? Yeah. If you know you're going to be around them, realize that you're going to be a little bit high-maintenance afterwards. So plan for it. Okay, I'm going to deal with um, person X over here who just kind of really takes it out of you. They whine about everything. So I'm going to need about an hour, hour afterwards to decompress and pray and, and get back, get my mind back on straight, right? See what I mean? Yeah. Hear what I'm saying? Because pastors do this all the time. They try to go straight from the min uh, missions field straight back to their home, and they take it all out on their wife and their kids. Mm. Well, why? Because transference happened, and they try thought that for whatever reason they were more righteous than Jesus himself, and then they could just handle it. Well, of course they can't handle it. See what I mean? Get back in there and get back in prayer. Transference is a thing. It always will happen. <coughs> so when you're talking, when you're venting, just watch out for the things we talked about. Don't let a bad attitude develop. When when you start feeling anger arise in you, realize that anger does ne it never produces God's righteousness. And so just like lust, when it comes into your head, you let it right back. So I mean, don't let it, don't let it stay there. If you feel yourself getting angry, take a step back and calm yourself down. Right? right. Um, w when you when you feel when you feel like gossiping or complaining, just don't. Just don't. You know what I mean? And, and you you'll know the difference. You'll be talking to your friend about it as something that's irritating you, and you'll start feeling the difference because the Holy Spirit will, will whisper it to you when you're getting into gossiping and complaining. You'll know. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It'll feel good, but you'll know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, and then, will deal with you. yeah, and then afterwards, God will give you a spanking. Well, and, and, well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That happened to me. I was I do. gossiping and complaining about somebody <laughs> to somebody else via text. I sent it to that to the person. person. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How'd that go, buddy? You went terrible. Yeah. <laughs> e. So, e. I got one for you too. My, that was my. I. I don't know. Maybe it was my red. It was oh. My God. That's so crazy. And and, and, and and I'm sorry, I will admit it, explicitives immediately came flying out of my mouth. <laughs> Stop! Ah, ah, ah. Take it back! And take it your, back! And your heart just stops and you're waiting for that person to respond. Ha! Mm. And... Ha! <laughs> yep. It's odd that you say that because just a few weeks ago... Text messaging um, is terrible. We <laughs> need to make a thing that says, are you sure you would like to send? Press just <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't receive a text like that, so I know it's not me. Thank Jesus. But a few That's weeks ago, where it came from <laughs> right? But a few weeks ago, though, there was this person who was doing that exact same thing, and the person responded like an angry message, and they didn't realize, still didn't realize they were texting that person. So they kept going, and the person's like, "Fine, you can just go." And she's like, "Oh well, th this person, they're not ready for me to leave yet. I don't think." And she's like, it "It's me." You're texting me. You can leave. <laughs> it was just like, wow, that's just terrible. No, I but... <laughs> immediately realized it. Like, the moment I hit send, I looked at the name, and I was like, oh. No. Meltdown. My life is over. It's ended. Failure. I'm not getting back up from this one. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't see no, failure as the end. <laughs> Don't see failure as the end. <laughs> Keep trying. Send that text message again. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. See what I... But it's, although, honestly, though, sometimes, though, I do that same thing. I do something real stupid. You know what I mean? 
It's doing something I shouldn't be doing. You, you know what I mean. Don't look at me like with those righteous eyes. You're doing something all stupid, and you know that what you're doing is wrong, and then you get busted for it. It's like, oh, I got caught. And the, yeah, exactly. And, and you would have been fine, except that you got caught. Right! Oh. <laughs> so you oh. don't feel guilt because you feel guilt about what you Right? Did. You feel bad because you just got busted terribly. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the real life of venting. That's what actually happens. <laughs> So, um, but you know, and you'll you'll know the difference when you're when you're when you talk discuss with your friends, you know, and and you'll you'll know. This and this is something. Was a cautionary thing. <laughs> I hope. Don't do this. Uh, and, and so venting is something that that as we deal with it more, we're able to kind of distinguish more what's right and what's wrong. I gave you this whole long lesson of all, about all this. And it's still gonna take take weeks, months, years to, to fully kind of get the idea of it. You know what I mean? I'm still learning stuff about this, and I'm the one who taught just taught the lesson. So you know I mean, it's not something you're just gonna. I get it. It's gonna be something that's gonna take some time. There's gonna be trial and error. You know what I mean? Um, any questions about the lesson? It's funny how uh, a lot of times you go through this, and then like after a period of time, you look back and like, wow, that was dumb. <laughs> For even thinking or saying or yeah. acting or yeah. Yeah. No, I've been there. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Th this this lesson was was hard, but I think it was necessary. Yeah, for sure. Um, the question of the week: If Jesus was a Jew, why is Judaism a cult? Hmm. Very good question, right? That's a good question. Yeah. So write it down. I'm still trying to explain to Grandma that not all Israelis are Jews and not all Jews are Israelis. Yeah? How is she handling that one? She's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What's funny is when you have a Israeli Muslim. It's like, wait, that's a thing? <laughs> it's like an albino black man. Is that a thing? Thing. Really? No. Isn't that just the white man or no? no. Wow, I, I, yeah. I sound super racist right now, but I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's very rare. It's rare. Obviously, but it's a thing. It can happen. So, the, so the next week's topic will be the promised plan of God, and we'll look about Judaism and about the development of Christianity and why Judaism is a cult.